The late 60s were like no other time in U.S. history. The Vietnam War raged, the civil rights movement gained momentum, and in the spirit of Neil Armstrong's historic moonwalk. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Jim Worcester and Bill Gervasio launched their own dream to form a company called American Consulting Engineers, also known as ACE, in 1966. In the late 60s, uh, I became a bridge designer with uh, Clyde Williams. And then I uh, met Bill Gervasio, and uh, we learned as we first started, we found out that the bridges were sort of a necessary evil for the consultants. It's just something they had to do. And they make, made all the money on the highway portion of it. So we started our company based upon uh, five bridges that I had subcontracted from Frank Robertson Petrie with Jim's help. Worked out of my house, 76, 66, we had you drive. Uh, that lasted for uh, until the next spring and uh, my brother, uh, brothers who had Worcester Construction, they had a double wide construction trailer. They, had, they weren't using it, and I suggested we set it up and that become our office. I, I loved my job every day. I'd get up and uh, get up at 5.30 every morning, and, uh, come into work and uh, go home at 6 or 6.30. And, uh, if I needed to stay later, that'd be okay. If I needed to come in earlier, that'd be okay. But I loved every minute of it. It, it wasn't work. It was fun for me, all, every, all the time. The fledgling business eventually moved to 38th and Guilford, where it stayed for five years. Transportation was the first service offered in 1967, followed by civil engineering and land surveying. Major projects of the newly formed company included the widening of 38th Street from Lafayette Road to I-65 in Indianapolis and the modernization of Harding Street and New York Street bridges over the White River in Indianapolis. We were successful in, in getting uh, road and bridge work right from the get-go. Dated December 27, 1967. I think we made a very large income, $51,048. Today that wouldn't even make one payroll. <laughs> I became very much enthralled with the type of work that they do, uh, and, I'm, and I enjoy working with the engineers. Structure Point's always been good to the city of Hammond. They've always done an excellent job, and I can't think of any projects that I'm, that I'm not proud of. The 70s were a time of rapid change. The Vietnam War had ended, President Nixon resigned due to the infamous Watergate scandal, and people boogied to disco. We cheered as Secretariat ran away with horse racing's Triple Crown, and here in Indianapolis, Unigov was created, which impacted the city's growth and development due to its inclusion of Marion County. When we started, I remember Jim and Bill saying, we've got $100,000. <laughs> in our kitty or whatever, and we'll promise you a year's worth of work. That's exactly what they said. Well, when we started growing, we had eight, about eight, nine employees. Just, just, just kept growing. In 1973, Ace began working with the Golden Imperial Oil Company. During the course of that program, we hired the 17-year-old son of a Golden Imperial executive as an apprentice. He clearly enjoyed working at ACE. Rick Connor now serves as the company's president and chief operating officer. Whatever time I had available, um, they were always more than willing to, to, have, me, uh, to have me work there. When I graduated from uh, college, it just so happened that American Structure Point had a, had a job. I started as a bridge engineer. The year 1974, marked Ace's move to 38th and Ruckel, which remained our home for 10 years. 525 East 38th Street was really the first office building we were in. That was uh, an office building that we, we remodeled it a couple times to make it uh, more useful for our operation. The following year, we reached our 1,000th project, 
a milestone that confirmed the company's growth. In 1976, we celebrated our 10-year anniversary and began to dive into the waters of design and site development with our master planning of Park 100, a 3,000-acre business park on the northwest side of Indianapolis. Two friends of mine um, in, ended up own, or owned all the property where there's now Park 100. A fellow by the name of Vern Young and uh, Mo Thomas. Back in the day, Mo Thomas was, um, his claim to fame was he was the one that put together the lion's share of the land for Park 100. The people that I've always been involved with uh, were always creative and trying to find ways to solve problems. And uh, I, I think that's what they built their business on. In 1972, ACE developed plans for State Road 101 over the Ohio River and Markland Dam, a 28-span bridge connecting Indiana with Kentucky. Yeah, that was a fun one, too. We, uh, we really lucked out on that to, to get that design. That was our first big bridge. We got to sign the project, and even though it was a lot of it was done because the footings for the bridge were all in the Markland Dam itself, so we just had to put the bridge over the top of the dam. In 1974, we tackled one of our largest projects yet, State Road 912, Klein Avenue. This project resulted in some of the tallest and longest bridges ACE had ever designed and required several computer programs to handle the complexity of the project. That was a very, very interesting project, a lot of fun. Uh, uh, we had to, it was, the uh, Riley Road interchange was over 100 feet in the air, 100, 120 feet of clearance as I recall, which is a huge, high bridge. It was a huge project. The length of the job was six miles. That was the biggest survey that uh, the company had ever had, the biggest survey that I had ever been involved in. Back when I first started working, I was here for a couple years and we did the State Road 912 I-80 interchange, which was like the biggest job the company had ever done, much less it was like the biggest job that NDOT had done at that time. And it was like a $110 million job. And it's like, now we turn around $100 million jobs about every other year. Ronald Reagan swept into office in 1980, followed by the fall of the Berlin Wall. We also experienced the AIDS epidemic and the tragic explosion of the Challenger space shuttle. The decade saw the introduction of the world's first personal computer by IBM. The city of Indianapolis began to establish itself as the amateur sports capital of the world due to its hosting of the spectacular Pan Am Games and the Final Four College Basketball Tournament. Our professional sports thrived as the NFL's Colts secretly came to town. Our company proudly assumed a role in Indianapolis's rapid growth as we helped work on the Capitol Avenue pedestrian tunnel. Capitol Avenue pedestrian connector that connects the state capitol building to um, the One North Capitol office building um, goes underneath Capitol Avenue just north of Washington Street downtown. And I designed that. That was my project. I was the project manager, the structural engineer, the whole bit. In the early 80s, we oversaw structural renovations for two historic buildings in downtown Indianapolis the 12-story Canterbury Hotel, and the Test Building, a nine-story office building on Monument Circle. That same year, ACE provided environmental documentation and road and bridge design for the relocation of Washington Street over the White River, which began the transformation of downtown Indy by creating space along White River for the new Indianapolis Zoo and White River State Park. A big job we had that didn't last too long was the Washington Street relocation. That didn't last very long because they put the hammer to us to get it done right away. In 1985, we used eight railroad flat cars erected too wide 
to develop an economical and creative replacement for the rural Harrison County Bridge number 84. As ACE grew, we held our first annual company picnic in 1982 and our first company golf outing in 1988. In 1984, we moved to a new office building on Millersville Road, marking the beginning of a period of intense growth, including $2 million in revenue in 1984, 50 employees in 1986, our 2,500th project in 1987, and the addition of three new service lines, environmental, architecture, and construction inspection. The company, you know, since we were uh, uh, opened in 1966, we'd always been doing construction inspection work. We just never called it that. When all the federal dollars started becoming available for projects, uh, part of that uh, stipulation of using those federal dollars was that you had in your projects inspected to make sure that they meet the con conform to the plans and specifications. The environmental group back then was called the Special Projects Group, and we did all sorts of weird stuff compared to the civil engineering that Jim had been doing before that. The environmental department was a natural offshoot of the highway work because the environmental requirements became an issue on uh, every, every uh, road project and uh, transportation project. So uh, uh, getting involved there so that uh, if nothing more than just to, to control the project so we could, we, we could find out what the problems were environmentally and solve them and not have to rely on a, another consultant to do the work. The growth has been, uh, I'm going to say, astronomical. So we've grown both in breadth of our work and the scope of who we serve. Our architecture group designed several office buildings in Indianapolis, including the Lake Clearwater Office Building and Ross and Babcock. In 1987, Rick Connor was named a new owner after founder Bill Gervasio retired the previous year. Uh, Jim um, approached me and said, hey, I, I really would prefer not to run this company alone. I'd like to invite you into ownership. And he uh, effectively made me a 50-50 partner right at that point as, as Bill exited. That was a very short time that uh, I was all by myself there. But thanks everybody for sticking with me, those that, you, that were there at the time. During this growth period, ACE became involved in the design, site development, and survey of several retail strip centers and shopping centers. Philip R. Duke uh, organization and Skinner Broadbent. And uh, those were the two clients that, that allowed us to enter the private developer uh, vertical construction market, if you will. We had uh, some really, really good clients. They were all major developers, and we did uh, all their work. That was difficult keeping up with. Both Jim Worcester and Bill Gervasio stressed all the time how important it was to keep our clients happy and they, they would do anything for the client. The 90s. Famous for rap and hip-hop, Princess Diana, The World Wide Web, Rodney King, O.J. Simpson, and much more. Indianapolis experienced a period of major growth with the Indianapolis Motor Speedway's first NASCAR Brickyard 400 and the opening of downtown Circle Center Mall and Conseco Fieldhouse. The city also kicked off a multi-million dollar infrastructure repair project called Building Better Neighborhoods to rehabilitate long-neglected neighborhoods. We reached our 5,000th project in 1992 10 million dollars in revenue by 1995 and had a hundred employees by 1996. The decade included architecture, structural engineering, and site design for several industrial and manufacturing facilities including Indiana Oxygen, Essex Wire, and Logo 7, now Reebok, as well as unique projects like the Krupp-Gerlach Presta Division building 
which encompassed plant layout design and master planning for a high-tech manufacturing facility in Danville, Illinois. In 1992, Rick got a call from Gene Uthi and asking if we can design a uh, cold forging plant. And we had just finished Essex Wire, Essex Wire so we had some, some limited experience with manufacturing. So we're, we're traveling to Liechtenstein for an interview for a project. We don't even have the project. We're having to pay for our own travel. And I said, Bob, you're going to have to pinch me because I'm, I'm not so sure this is a dream that we're even really here. Well, what turned out is we not only got selected for that project, but they've been an ongoing client ever since. We've done over 20 projects with this and Corrupt in four locations. And they were doing an upgrade to a facility in Danville, Illinois. Well, they have a facility in Hamburg, Germany that they wanted us to go look at uh, because they wanted to replicate the technology here in the United States. So Mike Kubengarner and I were able to travel to Germany to meet with our, our counterparts over there. The environmental team handled several major projects, including the Little Eagle Creek Interceptor, our first sanitary sewer master plan, the East Marion County Regional Interceptor, and several Harding Street Corridor projects. Two reports that said that sewer is out of service and it should be plugged off. Well, in reality, when the flows come up, there's a blind structure in one of the intersections and it overflows to that sewer. If you go out at the right time, you see the wastewater overflowing the manholes. It doesn't do that anymore, but overflow the manholes and then the river comes up and goes into the sewer. Nobody else had figured that out. And those sewers, some of them, does it brick structures, beautiful. In 1996, ACE provided design for Hazel Dell Parkway, a new four-lane divided parkway that implemented the innovative design solution of roundabout intersections. This was the firm's first roundabout project and the first roundabouts in the state of Indiana. ACE was the program manager for the Argosy Casino project in Lawrenceburg, coordinating multiple subconsultants the largest project for our architecture group up to that point. The Lawrenceburg uh, Casino, which uh, was really, really a fun project. Uh, at one time, I believe there were over 20 consultants working for American. It was such a huge project with so many phases and so many different buildings. Um, and it was really a good education for me um, right out of school to not really be doing the work, but to be seeing the professionals that were doing the work and be involved in every single aspect of that project and every meeting. That was by far the largest project we'd ever worked on and it was very enjoyable, entertaining, demanding, but not only because of the project, but what it did for a community. It, it took Lawrenceburg from a poor river town and made it into something else and, that, and that's what architecture is about is, is improving the environment. Our longtime client, the city of Hammond, was fortunate enough to be awarded a gaming license and in the mid-90s we helped design and inspect the road and bridge access to the marina, casino, waterworks, and county park. This road and bridge we did up in Hammond for the Hammond Casino 15 years or so ago. It was right off Lake Michigan and we were building this thing in the middle of the winter time. And I mean, it was so cold that uh, if you took a cup of coffee out with you to go walk to wherever you were going to watch the work, it would be an ice, ice cube. Yeah, I'll never forget that, seeing the frozen waves out on the lake, and just I don't think I've ever been that cold. A uh, real important project that the city had when they got the gambling boat was we, we needed a bridge built to the boat as quick as possible because they wanted to be the first one to open. Structure Point whipped that project out in like no time flat. Uh, we went from, from talking about it to actually driving over the bridge in uh, 18, 18 to 20 months. It was a fabulous project and everyone was happy about it. In 1997, Greg Henneke, a former client with INDOT, became executive vice president and part owner of the company. I came here for two primary reasons. One was because I wanted to work somewhere fairly big, which in retrospect it wasn't that big compared to what it is today. But 
Uh, I always wanted, I uh, always thought that uh, American consulting engineers, at that time ACE, was one of the best, if not the best, firm. In 1998, Forensic Services was added to our practice and formally branded as the investigative group. Stories of our staff going above and beyond the call of duty, I think, I think we all know what we sign up for um, when we come on board and just, you know, you know, the daily nine to five and whatever else in addition that goes along with that. But, you know, we, there's just countless stories of our staff uh, responding after hours in the middle of the night on weekends over holidays when an emergency comes up and they need an expert to help provide answers. In 1999, our name changed to American Consulting to reflect the broader scope of services and offices in Columbus, Ohio and South Bend, Indiana were added. We've gone, like I said, it was 12 people then and we're up close to 50 now. So just to see so many more people come around and the service lines as well. Um, when I came and we started out, it was mainly just transportation. There was one water line project, one storm water project, but now that we've expanded into site civil and structural and forensic and surveying and environmental. It's just, it's exciting to, to learn about all these different types of services too. The 21st century began. Despite the terrorist attacks of 9-11 marking the war on terror, Americans grew even stronger as we gathered as a community to protect the country we love. The 2000s marked a new age of possibility as technology erupted bringing our friends and family closer in ways we never could have imagined. The decade brought Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, the Apple iPod, and later, the iPhone. Our world was changing as the minimum wage increased. Michael Phelps started his journey to become the most decorated Olympian of all time. And we elected our first African-American president. Closer to home, IU basketball coach Bob Knight was fired amid a firestorm of controversy. The Indianapolis Motor Speedway hosted its first U.S. Grand Prix race. And Market Square Arena was demolished amid a cloud of memories and dust. We rejoiced as our very own Indianapolis Colts won the Super Bowl in 2007. In late 2005, former Indiana Governor Mitch Daniels launched major moves an aggressive 10-year, $3.8 billion transportation plan to significantly improve and expand Indiana's highway infrastructure. The company thrived as we achieved our 10,000th project in 2000 and $15 million in revenue in 2001, jumping rapidly to $50 million in 2008. In 2001, we moved to our current headquarters on Shadeland Station. American Consulting's reputation um, was much bigger than the office ever showed. So when we moved here, I mean, that was a, that was a, a big deal. In 2003, the IT Solutions Group was formed to offer technological advancements to our current clients and other growing businesses in the marketplace. By 2004, our firm had grown to 200 employees. We were listed in the Indianapolis Business Journal as the city's ninth largest architecture firm and fourth largest engineering firm, and we were consistently named a top 500 design firm by Engineering News Record. When we first made the um, Engineering News Record top 500 list, that was exciting. Um, it was kind of like we came into our own. Same thing with the IBJ list when we first hit the you know, top architecture company. In 2006, ACE celebrated its 40th anniversary and officially became American Structure Point in 2007. The Greendale-Lawrenceburg levee, which modified an abandoned railroad embankment to serve as a flood control structure, was one of the biggest projects to date for the civil group. The levee projects down in Lawrenceburg were probably the, had the largest impact just on my technical career growing up. We also tackled the Hamilton Town Center project, which helped grow our relationship with both Simon and T.M. Crowley. 
Special product for me was really that uh, Hamilton Town Center at exit 210 in Noblesville. Uh, it was a shopping mall for, it was a joint venture actually between Simon and Gershman Brown Crowley and that's when I got much closer to Tom Crowley and uh, also to Simon with Kurt Tappendorf from Simon so since then we, I worked with them all the time. In 2005 we broke ground on a Rusty Wallace Signature Speedway in Newton, Iowa which was conceptually designed by Paxton Waters and brought to life by American Structure Points architects, civil and structural engineers, and environmental professionals. The city of Elkhart hired American Structure Point to deliver a solution to the Indiana Avenue Railroad Crossing, which saw up to 85 trains per day. We designed an underpass to improve safety and reduce vehicular delays for the community. Uh, it was really fun to drive a $20 million um, railroad underpass through in about a year and a half and no one's ever done anything like that before to really accomplish great things for that community and it came out great. Standing next to Indiana Avenue underpass with with Greg Henneke and and with our hard hats on and and really the feeling of success knowing that we were going to get this project done. The IU Bradford Woods project was spearheaded by our environmental group this challenging assignment involved an environmentally friendly alternative to a traditional wastewater treatment. We came up with the idea of using a treatment wetland, so a constructed wetlands, to treat the wastewater and then do a soil absorption system so that they got rid of their discharge permit, they don't have to do any testing. And m maybe the best part of that is that they use it now as part of their learning tools for the kids. So the kids understand a little bit about what happens when they flush the toilet. In 2004, our Columbus office was awarded its first major design project from the Ohio Department of Transportation, State Road 161 in Licking County. Biggest one, I think, for the office was when we won um, 161, Licking 161. That was kind of outside of the design builds that we had been doing earlier. That was kind of the major freeway ODOT project that kind of launched us into a new category. Um, it was our first chance to, to really show ODOT the kind of project that we could handle. And it probably led to things like you know winning the Mott 75 and the other um, major freeway projects that we've had since then. Our planning group tackled two redevelopment projects in the 2000s. The Speed Zone Redevelopment Plan focused on improving economic opportunities and providing a new transformational vision for downtown Speedway, one well suited to attract new business investment and improve quality of life and entertainment options. The town, it's just, it's been completely transforming and, and they're like a full community. They all, they've all came together and it's exciting to see all the different people um, and, that are wanting to get on committees, that are getting, getting involved. Um, we redid the parks and, and music in the parks and um, you talk about just a, a great shot in the arm and it's been, it's been really exciting. The town's really thankful and uh, I know that we, we enjoy the relationship and, and I always enjoy, I get up and get coffee and then I'll just drive in the Speedway and drive down Main Street and kind of look at all the, the great things that we've done, so it's been a lot, of, a lot of fun. The Lakefront Redevelopment Plan in Whiting created a roadmap for public improvements to reconnect residents to the lakeshore, improve wildlife habitat and natural areas, and enhance recreation options. Our transportation group led and managed the design team for the new 13-mile US-31 corridor project around Kokomo with 36 new bridges and six interchanges to improve safety and reduce traffic congestion and travel time. Our value engineering and constructability review efforts led to a savings of $100 million on this $400 million project. The 2010s witnessed great heartache but it also brought us the return of some troops and the One World Trade Center to restore our patriotism. Indianapolis gathered the nation to our city as we hosted events such as the Super Bowl and the NCAA Final Four Tournament. Later, we said goodbye as our very own David Letterman ended The Late Show. Thank you for everything. You've given me everything. As the new decade came in, so did our business. 
2010 saw American Structure Point named the number one Indiana-based design firm by Midwest Construction and a best place to work in Indiana in 2011 and 2015. We celebrated steady growth with $70 million in revenue in 2014, a milestone of 375 employees reached, and added offices in Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, North Carolina, Texas, and Cincinnati. In 2010, the Keystone Parkway Corridor project was completed. This innovative strategy for the City of Carmel provided grade-separated, full-access roundabout interchanges at six existing intersections along one of the most heavily traveled roadways in the city. The project received 12 local, regional, and national awards. I mean, you go through 30 years worth of some of this stuff and you think, man, you've seen it all, and then you get a job like Keystone Avenue, you know, which is kind of, I mean, it's a, it's a completely different element. And now, you know, it seems like roundabouts are coming everywhere, but back then roundabouts were, you know, Carmel was pretty big in them, but the rest of the world still has yet to actually embrace them. And the fact that we did, you know, six interchanges up there with roundabouts and you see what we did to the corridor, you know, how much freer that moves than what it used to. Rebuild Indy, our first big jump into program management, was a massive $425 million initiative to transform neighborhoods throughout Indianapolis, restoring deteriorating streets, sidewalks, and bridges, and addressing neighborhood drainage and flooding issues. The Rebuild Indy was pretty special for me because I got to go back to, you know, sort of my roots at the city and, and run that project for them, and I got to go back and and work with the people that had worked for me, and uh, uh, that was really rewarding. And we got a lot of good work done and, and uh, made a big difference in the city. We built Indy, that was, I, I love that time down there. Um, we did a lot of good things, uh, got to spend $425 million on infrastructure improvements throughout Indianapolis, so that was really cool. American Structure Point continues to excel at program management projects such as the $150 million Carmel Program Management, the State Road 37 improvements in Fishers, and the Campus Park Project at The Ohio State University, a major ongoing project for our Columbus office. Over the last several years, the architecture group has seen significant project wins, including the Hamilton County Government Center, Riverview Outpatient Care Centers in Noblesville and Westfield, Blue Sky Corporate Headquarters, and the Michigan City Police Station. The Michigan City Police Department, uh, that's the first project that Brandon and I actually worked together on and from start to finish. One of the great things about this new site, when we were really looking at it, we had, were really revitalizing this community. We're approaching the project from our hearts. Honestly, we're trying to do the best thing for the client and the community. This decade saw an increase in the size and significance of our utility infrastructure project wins such as the Lake Station Water Treatment Plant, the Columbus Large Diameter Sewer Assessment, and Combined Sewer Overflow Elimination Projects in Evansville and South Bend. One of the strategies to, to grow our utility infrastructure group was to help communities in the elimination of their combined sewer overflows. Well, there's not two better examples of that than the city of South Bend and the city of Evansville. Both communities have engaged American Structure Point to help them determine is there a more cost-effective solution to eliminate their overflows. In Evansville, we're currently serving as a part of a program management team and helping them manage their $730 million federal mandate. In South Bend, we're helping them reassess their $550 million program. The reason we're successful in winning these projects is that we're providing our clients cost-effective, innovative solutions in order to meet the regulatory requirements. American Structure Point also entered the public-private partnership, or P3, market, where the project is designed, built, and financed by the private sector. Examples include the State Street Project at Purdue University and the $3 billion Ohio River Bridges East End Crossing Project, which has been hailed by the private sector as the model for P3 funding that other states should look at and adopt. You, know, you, work, you work hard on um, projects and you work very hard for clients and you do that for 20 years or so and one day you wake up and you realize that the, 
the biggest project, the most important project that you've been working on is the, is the building of the company itself. I think the key to our success has been the staff and how everybody's forward thinking and everybody seems to be on the same page. Well, I think integrity. I think all, all the clients we had relied on us. They would hire the best people and, and then attracted the biggest clients. They were saying that uh, American Structure Point was part of their team for lots of reasons. Never let them down. Always loyal to the customer. Always doing excellent work. There's no question our success over the past 50 years has been the direct result of the growth and prosperity that's been experienced in Indiana and Indianapolis and the other communities that we've served. So we owe our good fortune to the civic leaders and public officials and their staff whose excellent leadership and decisions created the environment for Structure Point's success. Indiana has been an incredible place to grow a business. I think the biggest key for American Structure Point success has been um, delivering for our clients day in and day out. The key to success are the people at American Structure Point. The people are, are what make this place, place great. We're a service business. I came here knowing that this was a strong growing company and uh, wanted to work someplace that was solid and, and sound with good people. They've always had the philosophy of hiring good people, developing good people, there are a lot of terrific people that work here, a lot of people that are driven to, to succeed. Without a doubt, it's, it's the people we meet, it's the people we hire, it's the relationships we make. When it gets right down to it, it's the people that make the company. Quality people. The people. It's got to be the people. Absolutely the people. We recruit and we retain great staff. The people that worked for us because they made the company. It's really a combination of strong, courageous leaders and skilled, driven people. I think the, the key to American Structural Point success has been, one, the people you work with, but, but also, you know, the management and, and their forward thinking. You know, Rick, Rick's had a clear vision. He's passed that on to everybody else and, and they followed that. Rick and the executive staff have set the vision in front of us. I think the management of the company um, has been very effective at getting in the trenches and working really hard. I mean, there's no one that works harder around here than Rick Connor. It's the same guiding principles that guide the company today that were really guiding the company in those early years. And I'm hopeful that uh, um, I can do a good job in imparting those same kinds of values to the people that will be guiding the company in the future.